All right, I'm gonna do the ad real quick again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry guys, who the 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 few of y'all who are watching, I'm gonna have to redo that again. I'll do it real quick. Um, this podcast is sponsored by Yak Attack, yakattack.us. And the Yak Attack is the leader in the kayak fishing industry and kayak fishing rigging solutions. Uh, they are located here in Virginia. It's a great company. Um, as kayak anglers themselves, I mean, they are kayak anglers. And as kayak anglers themselves, they are tightly integrated in the kayak fishing community and acutely aware of what the, of what the sport needs. So when anybody needs something done to it, you know, you have an idea that you need something rigged on a kayak, uh, Yak Attack, they, cr they can create it, they can manufacture it and make it. Um, it all starts with the gear track and the money mount. The gear track is a track that you mount onto your kayak, comes in many different sizes and colors and styles. Uh, it also, and the screwball that connects to that is the thing that attaches, makes everything attached to that. When everything attaches to that, which is a variety of rod holders, camera mounts, still cameras and GoPros, light poles with day flags, all the flags, all the light poles fold into the flag into a little bag. Uh, fish finder mounts, black pack, the black pack crate system, and it comes in a white pack, so it's not so hot in the summertime. All of this stuff is made in the USA. And the feature of this month is the Zuka Tube Rod Holder. This is one of the most versatile fishing rod holders on the market. Uh, nobody likes losing a, losing a fishing rod. Most of them can slip right out of there. This, fish, this rod holder actually can lock in the, the fishing rods. Uh, one side is a spinning rod, the other side is the bait caster, and they, they lock right in the position. Extremely versatile, whether you want to be in front of you, behind you, the, the ball and joint mounts swivels into all different positions, so you can have it any, any direction you want to on your kayak. It also doubles as an anchor point for your stakeout pole, your parking pole stakeout pole. You can position it over the side, stick your stakeout pole through it, anchor it in the sand, and you can stick right there and then slip it up, move it without using an anchor trolley. So that is the Zuka Tube Rod Holder. All this is at Yak Attack, and that's at yakattack.us. All right. And try it again. Take two. Take two. <laughs> Here we go. Right. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, now it's not so not, nervous now? <laughs> we were just talking about how you were maybe nervous because of the public speaking thing, but now you're not because you've done seen us fuck up like in I'm front good. of you. <laughs> and I'm explaining it now like on, so now it's even on a record that we just fucked up. So these six guys are, uh, are they local usually? or what that, they? Man, this is all over, man. I mean, there's yeah. some guys that are regional and there's some guys that are all yeah. over the place. You're just listening. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll forget about it. This is podcast number 24. This is July 21st, 2014. We've got Austin Hain from FineoSportFishing.com. That's F-I-N-A-O SportFishing.com. And Lee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I forgot to hit record. And so everybody went fishing again. today. Yeah, everybody, everybody went, went fishing, fishing today. today. Yeah. I fished with Jake on the Matador today. With uh, Mike came down. His parents uh, chartered a uh, half day inshore and uh, asked me to ride along. Good thing I did because even though we weren't catching anything, that mate didn't seem particularly motivated to be out <laughs> helping people at all. And the boats don't make me nervous at all or whatever. So it it was nothing but a normal day to me untangling things and. No, I mean we, we went flounder fishing and it, it was slow and I heard this afternoon it was great. Were you out there at the high rise? Yeah. yeah. We fished the high rise yeah, this yeah. morning. It was it was really slow. I mean we, we caught a few fish, one keeper, like one out of eight we caught yeah. was a keeper and we had a mondo um toad. That's all right. We did not have right near the luck the guy next to us had. He was having an awesome morning. Four big Ray hookups. Uh, F Ray. That. Ray. <laughs> F that. And we were just like, oh, thank God it's you. <laughs> the last one he said was, he had three cow noses, and the last one he said was one of those big carpet rays. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. He on was jigs? Doing work. Was it get him on uh, jigs? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, um. So they're smoking jigs now. Flatline. Uh, well, whoever the boat was. Oh, that was oh, the boat. Oh, oh, oh. I got you. I was like, what? Yeah, I was yeah. like, what kind of rig is that? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to flatline for flatfish, what? Right? No, no, no. Flatline <laughs> was the boat. He was on him. <laughs> <laughs> on the race deck. 
Yeah. Right, well, Austin is a, a, a charter captain here in, in the lower Virginia area. Um, mainly, you're you're probably known for Cobia. Mm. Um, uh, you, you just say you were, it was funny because you were nervous about coming in and sitting down, but it's not public speaking. Like like I said, you know, it's all it's chilling. Yeah, so we broke the ice for you by fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave it on <laughs> good. Leave it on standby for a little bit and see what happens. <laughs> I got you. But yeah, so you're 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 probably more well for, known for Cobia just because you you really got a good knack for sight casting. And, and and getting some big ones, and you usually go out and you post them up on Facebook and, and your website. And you're usually getting some big ones. Try to post all the time, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's the hot thing. It's got to be good for business. Yep. Yeah, Facebook's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. It does work really well for that. Um, yeah, and I, do y'all go on Twitter too? I I, I get the hang of Twitter. I mean, I, Instagram and all that. You got that going. Instagram, Facebook. I guess really on, and then I post on Twitter. I'll just post pictures on Twitter. I don't even because I don't understand the status thing. So I, right, I, I I have it just where my Facebook is attached to the Twitter. That's that's so, what that's right, what my opinion right. is. Right, so it yeah. just it goes to, and I every once in a while I see somebody has favorited something or retweeted something. I'm like, okay, cool, I guess, whatever. You know, I don't know what's yeah. It's kind of difficult to understand it. I guess it's because it's short, the short uh, message. You can't yeah, write, and everything you can't write I try and find out on on Twitter when I pull up Twitter because I don't I don't follow anybody. Nobody follows. Well, I don't follow anybody personally, mm -hmm. and I don't let anybody follow me because all I use it for is businesses. Like mm -hmm. I mean, to find out where the food trucks are or who's at the breweries, <laughs> what the stuff's going on there. You know what I mean? But it seems like underground foodery. Yeah, foodie I got shit. You. yeah. So I just beer shit. Yeah, and uh, so I mean, I just. It's so weird because every time anybody posts anything, it's like click on the link to Facebook because it gets half of what they want to say, yeah. and then you have to click on a link to find it. So, yeah. you know, I thought it would be easier. And actually, I used it. I use it when I'm traveling because hmm. you can get the traffic updates through yeah. Twitter. Yeah, we're tomorrow or a link up to that. Yeah. <laughs> I've looked into Twitter that hardcore. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know what the radio stations and places are. And sometimes you got you know not listening to the radio, you just. Yeah, Twitter. traffic's easier. Yeah. Traffic's really easy on there. Yeah. Mm. So, Cobia, right now, do you, do you, when, when is, do you go out and do any chilling, or is it just pretty I, much like casting? I really don't like. See, so you're the same as I, I, I. That's where I've gotten to be with. I don't like yeah. chilling at all. I, I, chum, I think I'm done with it for the most part. Chum, In that sense, I'm setting up and setting up and doing all that. I went chilling three times this year. Each time, I do it for about. Two hours, because what I do is if I have a full day trip, I'll go out in the morning and I'll set up my chum until the sun gets up. Right. And so we'll go out there before the, it's real, you know, sun's right. And so we go out there and we chum. And every single time, I have not caught a Kobe on the bottom, but we catch one of those giant stingrays. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, every single time I've gone, I've sight casted one off the ray. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sight casting is the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, even least, chumming, least, I'm sight casting. At least in the morning, I guess you're at least bring them in before you can actually see. So and, you're bring them into the area. You're getting a hot area happening at least. So then yeah. when you can, you can get up and see. Oh, yeah. When we leave, we always ride back up our chumps yeah. and use those as fishing nets. So. Another thing yeah. is always, like, it seems like everybody that really knows about cobia fishing, once they catch a nice one that they're going to keep, they put it on a rope and let it swim next to their chum because the other ones come up to that one more than they come mm. up to the chum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they put the thing, the devil, that damn thing. Mike Bass Knight ties, puts them on the front of his kayak. Yeah. He put it on an anchor rope in between him and his kayak. And just sat there and watched it. Yeah, he had like a 40 inch one day trying to catch a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't ever get a bigger one, but I mean, he had a, if that thing just. Is, he, he was like, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Tied up. So, uh, you how you have a. What kind of boat do you have? 24 foot Cape Horn. And you have a tower on that? Yep. So, you. With a, a good day. We, we get some good day visibilities, but on. Like a. Did you, did you fish today? Yeah. Did you sight today? We did a little bit. Because uh, today it was cloudy. I mean, no, there was, was no sun. I it was, was terrible. It was almost like you didn't even need sunglasses. Like, I, it, my it was eyes raining. Sensitive. It was raining where we were. Oh, okay. I, so it was it drizzled on me too a little yeah. bit today. But so today you, you're you're still sighting in, in these conditions. I was out there today, and I, I was looking and like we we look, but it's not like we don't do a whole set day on it. You do something else okay. on it. So, okay. so you do you do uh, flounder fish? Or yeah, we like flounder fish okay. today. Yeah. It wasn't on my boat either. Ah. Can't, I can't take the credit because we did really well today. But <laughs> so I was on my buddy's uh, buddy's boat. He's got his commercial license. So we went out there and just. Did, did, uh, did you did you the fishes out of Little Creek right here? Not, not. I don't know if this guy. He's, out, he's not a Little Creek, but he's a Navy Navy base Little Creek. Hydro oh, okay. sport fishing that guy. Okay, I don't know if it is. My buddy trip fishes with a guy on like Mondays that Chris Martin. Fishes. That's Chris Martin. Okay, he's oh, a, yeah. he's a beast too, man. Yeah, I'm a they go out there commercial. Yeah. They, I mean, they. 
and just catch them. Yeah, they're they're beast of flounder. Let's go to Kobe too. But yeah, he, they, really they, what's the commercial limit on Kobe? There's still one. I think if you catch a hood of it's like two per person. You two can keep like a six or something. So two per sure. person and six per boat is what I believe it is. Commercial. Yeah. Commercial. Yeah. Up to six per boat. Yeah. Right. You can't, right. you, it doesn't matter, you, you can't. can't have more than six. But I don't think you can commercial fish more than three people, right? I don't. I, mm-hmm. It would be six per boat, yeah, so it wouldn't matter how many people you have on the I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know all the rules. Yeah, no. it's, it's, you get into a lot of shit commercial fishing. Yeah, Jake was talking about it today. You know, I just, so I, I always try to right. compare to the, the regulations inside. You know, usually it's pretty close. It's pretty close. The tall tog sheep said those fish are the same. Yeah, yeah. you can kill unlimited tog though. What? Really? Can't you? No, no dude. I don't think so. The guy in the fall. The no, guy yeah, in the fall. The guy in the fall only keeps his four. I think. Yeah. I'm talking about like commercial line. Yeah. Yeah. You can only still kill four. Yeah. I thought it was like unlimited tog. No, God, otherwise you'd see it. That would be ridiculous. Otherwise you'd see it places. And God damn, dude, they, this they, bridge is yeah, a hill of astonishing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd kill them all. I thought, that's what I was saying. I'm like, dude, they're going to kill the population because, you know, in the spring you're just... No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. The sure population of Tautog totally. is extremely healthy. We're just regulated with the northern groups. That's the... Yeah. I've been over this, like, uh, several times and I'll do it again. Yeah. But we took samples... Did we, we... Fuck the state. We took the federal money this year through um, whoever, I can't remember what the guy's name was, but he was fishing with, Ken. I fished with Dr. Ken Neal on the mm-hmm. Healthy Grin. I don't know if you follow him on Facebook, yeah, if you yeah. don't, you should. Yeah. Uh, but, and I tell everybody that, if you don't follow Healthy Grin Sport Fishing, you should. He shares, not just not his, not just his reports, but the information he shares, you know. Um, but we took DNA samples off the fins this year. We're going to show the, the government that our fish are different than the fish in Maryland, are different than the fish in, uh, they went to Maryland, I think, and then um, Delaware and Jersey or something like that. And they've done this. They're sending the samples off. They're gonna show through DNA that the stocks are different fish. Mm. That we should be able to regulate our fish off our coast the way oh, we feel. The whole thing was it was the group regulation. They're regulating our tall fish with, with the northern the group fish. Fish. We have a population that's just they, Astonishing. They thought they were they were moving north and south, and that's why the tagging was even brought in to just kind of brought kind of yeah. basically to show them that it, it's not. It's going it west. proves that it, they do not. The tagging has proved that they yeah, do not. Move. The rare tags DNA. that they have moved are fish that are like medium sized, mm-hmm. and they go to a wreck that's not really that far away. Right. So, and t- you know as well as I do how tall how hardy they are. Mm. The damn things will live on ice for hours. Mm-hmm. So if I'm at this wreck and I catch one 16 and a half inches, and it's my last fish, and I go to that wreck, and I catch one 25 inches, and this fish is still flopping on the ice, like it's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially in the winter, that yeah, one's going back. Yeah, I cold, cold, cold air, they, they live forever anyway. But, so. Right, and if the fish was already tagged, the fish was already tagged, you know what I mean? You let it go somewhere else. But that fish is likely to go back, because I took some on my, my dad's boat, I, I tagged some um, small tog from the first island, brought them to a Little Creek jetty and dropped them off, <laughs> They got recap. One of them, one of them got recaptured at the first time. You were trying to, you trying to <laughs> repopulate our inventory. <laughs> trying to get a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to get a little. Dude, I saw going. one at the no wake zone sign. <laughs> yeah, about this big. Way back two big. years ago. I mean, she's probably <laughs> ten inches, eleven inches. Yeah, it was that big. Yeah, yeah 10, 10, 11 10 inches. Just oh. it like. Yeah. Yeah, but he had cast netted one from right there. We cast netted for mu- uh, mullet. Mullet. I'm mullet. The, no, mullet there. And he caught a little one. Too. That big was it? Yeah, a little one like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty random throw. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Not I mean, yeah. rocks, you yeah. know. They do a good population. I'm just like sheep said. Yeah, so that's what the DNA pro- is supposed to prove, that they're not moving. And they don't move. They don't move north and south. They don't move east, east and west. Yeah. They stay right where the fuck they are. I got you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you catch them in the summer. You just know what targets them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, then, and oh, it's off season. It and it's it's crazy because they should have a trophy allowance in the summer because the guy, a, a lot of times, now sometimes you'll get out there and they'll just be biting. But a lot of times, this guy sheep said fishing will catch a big one. Yeah. Halfway up a piling. Yeah. I mean, just come and grab your shit. Yeah. And I've caught him six, seven pounds in the middle of the summer. Yep. Yep. So anyway. Do you, yeah, do you. So, so by sight fishing today, do you mean you drove down the bridge and didn't see one? No, man. <laughs> no we, uh, we actually banged up like 20 flounder, man. Yeah. We crushed them out there today. And um, once the tires started ripping, we just put one, you drive really slow in the overcast. And we uh, we saw three, caught one. On um, pilings or just out in the open? Just out in the open. Just, right. r- I mean, got to go. Right, 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 right. Imagine. You can't cover any water. It's got to be so slow. Uh, you, we see and they come out I mean, from You got to see them waking at this. 
Well, no, no you gotta like, come set, up right underneath the boat. Or, what you do is you go hey, really hello. slow, and you have. Uh, it wasn't my boat, so the, Chris was driving. He had his hands on the throttle, which I mean, creeping. And I just you find like the life and the tide lines where you normally look, and you just sit there with your bail open, <laughs> jig in your hand, you sit like this. And the second you see it, you pitch, and you just jig, 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 jig. So. It's pretty cool. You gotta yeah. be quick when it's yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. There's no like leaving it behind you and turn around because you'll lose them instantly. You got one second. To when it's yeah. like this. Yeah. But I mean, we didn't look today really. We just cruised from from uh, you know Fourth Island, just cruised real slow to our next flounder spot. Yeah. Right. And it's all three. So when it's sunny, they're gonna be stacked. Yeah. There's no doubt. We, are they starting to get on the pilings yet? I haven't really looked for them on the pilings. I'm still slamming them in open water. Yeah. Jay and so, I didn't see any last week. Yeah. You in his boat. We ran up and down the bridge after. After we saw the five in the open water, we ran up and down the bridge a couple times because the sun got low. Yeah. And we didn't see what, it. What bridge? Second to third or fourth? Uh, second to third. I got you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I usually show first on the poles, you know? Yeah. But that's where my biggest one came from. That's not, I mean, not the biggest one I've hooked. The biggest one I hooked came out from underneath a buoy and it surprised the shit out of me because I didn't see anything. <laughs> Did you blind cast it? I didn't see anything until the eel was in the air. And she came out of the thing, head, the head looked like a basketball. And all of a sudden, the eel was just gone, and under the buoy, I was just, the line just broke instantly. I was just like, oh, no. That's we hooked a giant this year. Biggest fish I've ever seen. What's like, the biggest one you've landed so far? This you year? Know, all, 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 we only, man, we've uh, got 82. 82, okay, right. right. That's, so, a, that's a big but, one. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's the sound. Here's the sound. Two monsters. 82 yeah. pounds, but you got to remember, every time I go out, is with a charter. Right. Not hating on my customers. Right. Oh, no. But you no. hand a guy a fish over 90 pounds, whoop. You, you, they find him for 30 <laughs> minutes, then they, then they start they start giving up, and the rod starts going slack, and I can't tell you how many big fish I've lost right on the side of the boat, because they get a boat side, and I always they keep my boat. Quit. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes, like, takes one more dive, and they just give up. The rod hits the deck or something, and it just pops. I'm like, oh, it sucks, yeah. man. It's just, it's because it's, like you said, it's a half hour. And the whole thing is he fucking saw the thing. He knows what's going on. Before it even starts, he knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And you're like, ah, yeah, hey, yeah, man, I got, got you. Good luck. <laughs> some, some people can do it, though. Yeah, I mean, That's the life yeah. of the tower, dude. That's what, You don't have to fuck with them. You don't have to. They, 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 a lot of times they can't even see you. You can just drive. <laughs> cuss at the air. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks when it's slow, though, man. They're down there just... They don't know what's going on. You're yeah, all you do is drive around, around and, and yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and that's what up. The, dude, that's today. Mike's dad and all that. The flounder weren't biting good in the morning for us. I don't know. I mean, Jake can't fish up any further than where we were fishing, comfortably around that bridge. So right, right. Yeah, he was on that. You were on the big sport fisher, correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought you were on. Yeah. Yeah. The matador. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big yeah. bird. Yeah. yeah, but his big dad game. has to have AC. You know, rich white people problem. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he's all looking at him like funny, but I mean, they didn't want to. They didn't want to go Spanish mackerel fishing. Well, and that was decent a decent idea because it, as you know, it requires no effort whatsoever. The man just trolls around. Right. This, the the planers are twenty feet off the rod tip. You crank the reel four times. The mate grabs the leader and pulls the thing in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> That's Spanish mackerel fishing. Mm -hmm. They didn't want any parts of that. And it, it was a good thing. Spanish mackerel fishing sucked yesterday, so Jake was like, yeah, we'll go flounder fishing. Yeah. Flounder fishing was good yesterday. Well, flounder fishing sucked for us today. <laughs> <laughs> mackerel <Spanish> fishing, <laughs> off the chain, dude. Off the golf ball, down off damn neck today. Uh -huh. All you wanted, and they were like two, three, four pounders. Yeah. They were smoking them. Mm -hmm. They had them on bait balls, so you could have got them casting. Oh, I mean, yeah. they had them. They, they, they would just see them on the depth finder, and the bait was just so wadded up. Wow. And then you would just get marks around it. Done the Spanish thing, man. No, I mean I've done it, but it's just, it's just I've, not, I, I, I hate trolling. I like casting from them off the beach and stuff. We throw. Yeah, we, see, it's tough. I, mean, I, can, I don't mind trolling. Days, I'll go. In, I'll go in Rick's boat on dates when we can't sight fish, and we'll we'll troll those big rappel of plugs off the ocean front and try and catch kings, yeah. cobias. Uh, that whole time we put you know two a planer or two planers out. Why not? You know what yeah. I mean? I you just watch you. the depth finder. You see what's going on. There's lots of live bottom out there in the ocean. But where those fish were last, I saw you a lot. At the end of last season, where those fish were all over that bottom right off Damn Neck. What, Kobe fishing? Yeah. That That's bottom, that the ocean. bottom holds fish all, all year. That bottom is amazing right there. Yeah. A lot of bait there. That's yeah, why so, I go there every, so, every time. Oh, I mean, if you look at the machine, the bottom is so alive right there. It's just that live, hard bottom. Yeah. I mean, any and any chart shows it to you. It's not a secret. Right. Whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, it's plain as day right off the beach. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. It's good fishing there. 
Do you do any charters on Eastern Shore, like when the Reds or when the Stripers coming in? Oh, yeah. You do that I, I do it all, but in the summer, you know, people call me. They, that's, they want they to go. go fish well, fish. That's, that's, like I said, that's kind of your... That's, yeah. Kind of, I, you know, when 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 I think of Fineo sport fishing, when I see I'm always yeah, it's Kobe. You know, yeah. When I see your post, I'm always kind of ah, let's see what Kobe is. You know, he, he, he got this week or, or something yeah. like that. But I definitely do the Reds, man. You know, spring of yeah. course, yeah. Eastern Shore, and then how many times have you guys come across them out in the open? What the Reds? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. You know, early season. Oh my goodness, we were just going out targeting them. Go, I have a question about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Going off well, that's, the, the ocean and just slamming them, pulling up on the acre schools, you know. Right. And that's, that's have you seen any of that this year? You know what's, yeah. Early yeah, season. Yeah. Early season, but not, not, you haven't seen any since summer. It's kind of gotten going. Uh, I saw one school, and then um, that was like in June or something, man. But I, they're catching them. My friends are catching them. I haven't personally ran into them recently, um, but I, I know they're out there. My friends have been running into them. They just started popping back up. So yeah. It's something I've never seen. I've only ever caught them, and I mean, well, I've caught them in herds. Well, too, and you've wanna, seen that. But. I want to, I want to go even with mother. I want to go mothership out for them because I, I, eventually I'm going to make a DVD about where our reds, our big reds, you know, chasing the reds, you mm-hmm. know, and but and where they go in the summertime is kind of like out of our range because they're for a kayaker. They're out in the middle of the ocean or ocean or, or yeah, yeah, the yeah, bay yeah, or, yeah. We just can't really go go to them. Yeah, I so I want mothership just to get footage of it, just to see it, just to get footage of it, and launch kayaks and just get pulled around by them. It is, it is ridiculous. You ever had people want to turn away from them and go cobia fishing? Like, <laughs> uh, do they get tired of it? Because I can tell you, you one thing that them. I'm looking for the entire time I'm cobia fishing is that. That's what I'm looking for the you, whole time wait, I'm cobia fishing. While you're cobia fishing, you wanting a red school? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Why not? I'd rather catch drum all day. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather catch drum all day. I'm a drum fisherman. This is the very first saltwater yeah. fish I caught was a big drum. I caught nine big citation red drum before I ever caught a puppy drum. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's interesting. The next the next thing of note I caught was like a 12-pound gray trout. And then like, That's a stud. That yeah. was in 05, yeah. went right before. I mean, that was the last right behemoth. It was the last behemoth, behemoth. Yeah. essentially. Yeah. Hmm. Right in Rudy, fishing from the dock. It was five minutes before I had to go to work. I literally was getting, it was literally one of those almost last cast things. It's like, oh, really? 12 pounder, cool. I've never <laughs> I, Dude, I was freaking out. I didn't have shit to land it with. This thing shows up, it's got teeth and the, shit. I'm flying he's, he's, he's on the Rudy on the rocks. rocks. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Huh? That's awesome. It was cool as shit. <laughs> yeah, we, I, I mean, of course I cast the Reds if I have a charter, but like, when I'm out there fun fishing, I might, I'll cast one rod in there. That's it. Just because, this is a true story, we were in a tournament one time. And it wasn't on my boat, I was on a, on a French boat, this was like two years ago, worst decision ever. We had four bucktails, and I, oh, man, I, I, I used to throw, with I used to throw a lot of <laughs> jigs and no live baits. Um, I'd only throw live baits for the uh, big fish, but we saw we were in so many drums, the guy downstairs cut off the, cut off the eel and put on another jig, so we had no live baits. Mm-hmm. So we pitched four jigs in there. All four of them get smoked instantly, obviously. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, all on video. this is not. A, this isn't like fishing for cobia. This no. is instant. You yeah. throw in those drum, you're hooked yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> and, they're, they're cool. and I have the, Go, yeah, the GoPro video. The guy has it on his chest. He pop, 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 and we're all hooked up. You know, we're having fun. Drum school sinks down. Like four seventy pound. <laughs> <laughs> is you in a cobia tournament? Yeah, in a cobia. Oh. Tournament. And in the video. You see me opening my bail and just start wiggling the line, trying to pop the <laughs> jig out of the fish's mouth, and we're all wiggling, we're just screaming. It was a disaster. And so that's why when I'm cobia fishing, I don't hook. I'll hook one up, maybe, maybe two. Just but, but, well, you, know, you, know, you, you're not, you're, you don't, you're not fun fishing that often. Yeah, no, I know. But you also, yeah, you don't want to hem up all well, your lines like oh, that. Oh, it was yeah. a bad yeah. All your lines were hooked. Oh, there and they of course, are. I, like once I realized I couldn't get it unhooked, we all like just. And yeah. it's weird because you know you'll pull them off if you want to catch them. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. You're gonna lose your fish if you want to catch it. So at the time we're trying to lose fish, they won't come yeah, off. So we, we just lock the drag. We're crank as fast as we can. And I was trying to break them off, and every time I break, they just turn their head yeah. and break the balls. Like, Are you kidding me? Because I was just gonna. I had jigs up top. I was just gonna cut it and tie it yeah, right the break. Right. Throw it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was. One time I did when, when me and Lee came up on some reds one time, and we thought we were casting the 30 inches, and we ended up casting to like 50 inches, mm. and. I hooked up on it and I, I was so surprised that I went <gasps> and like let it loose. Like, because it, it was little, it was a little rod. I wasn't, wasn't geared for it. I at threw all. my speckled <laughs> trout rod out yeah. there and luckily it broke the eight ounce jig head yeah. instantly. My, they my, just my, rushed the eight ounce jig head. I did that. Like, I went up. loose on it just to oh, get off. You know, just yeah, I don't want to yeah. catch you with this. I want to reset. Yeah. You know, but yeah. yeah that, Drums it, are great if you're targeting them. I love catching Don't get me wrong. I don't mean that by any means. Oh, yeah. yeah Drums yeah. are awesome. Yeah. 
if you look for drum. Yeah. Yeah, I love drum fishing though. Yeah. Surf fishing, it's my favorite form. Right. I love that. Yeah, I do it every fall. Yeah, yeah, you're still working. I, 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 I see you definitely you pictures. Oh, that's you're right. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. I see your pictures all the time doing that stuff. Love pier fishing yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys catch a few off the pier. I mean, you get first shots a bunch. I bet seeing them as well as you do. <laughs> we just throw bottom baits in the fall. They just smoke it. Yeah. So many of them out there, you know. But huh? Off the pier. Yeah. See, I hate catching junk. I don't want to catch junk. If you go at the right time with the best bait, you'll catch like one shark. Right. If it's, if it's <laughs> <laughs> you say right. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 no, no, no. Or that's why I don't chum right there. Exactly. <laughs> right. If I catch a ray, I'm ready to leave. I'm like, we're gone. So when you're when you, so you're you, you cast bucktails to to Cobia, mm -hmm. uh, all those color bucktails and any any one like, I, you know, may really go with that one, or is it is it changed through the years? Talk about the, colors, the colors, variations. It's usually those bright pinks, chartreuses, the whites and the chartreuses, the brights and pinks. And all that stuff. The, is it is it contrasting color? The the only reason I use bright jigs, they'll eat black. They'll eat. They don't care. I use the bright so I can see it. Yeah. I, I use I use bright pink or bright so green. So you can see the green the, you can control. He use orange mm -hmm. and white. Because you know when you either, either variation, right? Yeah. White so jig, orange tail, or orange orange jig. Something you can see. <laughs> you know, like I don't, the fish doesn't care. I've, I've called them on purple and black. They yeah. don't care. I mean, the eel's black and they yeah. they smoke those. For <laughs> reasons, you know, like. You, you cast a jig up, and you, if it's overcast or any situation, you can see that pink right on the surface. Right yeah. when you get in front of it, you can, you can watch them darting on it and all that. So, so yeah, you throw something darker, you know, natural color, it's going to lose it in the water and not yeah. be able to control it. Yep. Yeah. Saw yeah. a triple tail last week. How many of those do you see? I've only seen one. Ever. So, Jan seen two. Well, um, if you don't do work sport fishing, JC Blanco mm -hmm. or whatever, he peer fishes, surf fishes a bunch. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, he's seen two last week. I was with him on Thursday. We saw the second one. Man, it was it was one of those things where the time before he didn't do anything and the fish spooked and ran, and this time he should have waited a half a second. He threw his Cobia bucktail jig by it, and it turned at it, but it was too fucking... I mean, it was only this big, you know, so yeah, five, yeah. six pounds. It wasn't going to be able to eat that bucktail, you know right. what I mean? So it didn't get it. We had a dude standing on the front with a fly, ready to go. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. If he had waited five... I mean, he was already back casting. If he had waited a couple of seconds, that fish turned on that bucktail, it was going to annihilate that fly. Yeah. So we were going to catch a fucking triple tail on the fly in the bay. Yeah. In the bay. <laughs> in the bay. <laughs> oh, eat deep in the bay. Yeah. <laughs> I saw one. The only one I've ever seen, this ridiculous story, Ocean View Pier. This guy caught it on a bloodworm. Ah. A little triple tail like yeah. this big. I was, yeah. like, I was like, you kidding me? He's like, yeah, what do I have? Crappie? Yeah, no, they say, like. You know what? You know why they don't get annihilated on the top? I found out today, they're not scaly. They're like four times as armored as a trigger fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> they just get something hits them and they bounce off them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't want any. And it looks like a bag. Right. Like you say, is that bag yeah, swimming? Yeah, yeah, both of us at the same time looked at each other and was like, is that bag swimming? <laughs> <laughs> is that bag swimming? Yeah, because I mean, it was just, you know, like it looked like a food lion bag drifting in the tide line. And then it just kind of twitch. You're like, oh, it's alive. It's a, yeah, mm -hmm. from like 50 yards away. Like, go, go over there. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> that was one of those afternoons, man. It was t fishing was tough last Thursday. We went out. It was should have been good. Everybody caught fish. And the morning bite was amazing. We passed Zach on the way in. He stopped and talked to us. He caught like 14 or some shit, whatever. The, I mean, you guys, you guys, you and him, you guys catch him every day, so. <laughs> but anyway, what day Thursday was. It was bright and sunny, and nice, and we got out and yeah. fished that water. And as soon as we stopped, we saw one and started working towards the bridge. It didn't, couldn't get it to bite. Started working towards the bridge and didn't see a single thing all afternoon. Mm. People around us were catching, would catch one here and there. Just, I mean, standing up in the tower. Just one of those days. That's yeah. What it is. Just, yeah. yeah Some days you just bad stuff happens. Pulling fish. Breaking fish, just terrible stuff. Well, then last when I went with Jay last week, the we saw I went with Jay on Friday. He had he got his boat back with the tower on Thursday. We went on Friday, up in the middle of the bay where everybody's fishing. It took us a while. We eventually saw we saw five. Every one of them was pushing weight. The next day he went with Trip out and out. Every single one of them was two feet under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right in the halo. They didn't no, not a single surfer. But of course it was Saturday. So. Yeah, Saturdays suck anyway. You know, it's so much boat pressure. You gotta find. I'll fish a new area if I have to, just to leave the boats. Yeah. So. When you're, when you're, when you're throwing live baits, mm -hmm. any baits that haven't worked. I know with reds, with reds, I can I've caught them on every 
Long Everything I've ever thrown at yeah. it. If it's if you ever throw a crab. Oh, there it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, run from a crab? Did they run from a crab? Cause run from a crab. They, cause, dude, well, cause ben says they Ben says crabs don't fall from the sky. <laughs> ben Shepard said crabs don't fall from the sky. Those fucking things are scared to death when the crab hits but the surface. They'll eat them. They'll eat, they they'll eat them eat, off the surface. Eat, yeah. They're scared to death. That thing hits the surface. See you later. Yeah, <laughs> we 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 thought it was gonna be a crazy idea. We we came up um this was like Way early season, man. We were out there actually sight casting the red schools, you know, off the ocean. Mm -hmm. When they first came in, and we ran across a pair of cobia, and we had crab because we were gonna, you know, if we didn't get any sight cast, we we're just gonna yeah crab red. Yeah. And so we cast a jig, then he casted. Uh, we had we had some live croaker, did nothing, would not touch a thing. So got us there. I was like, let me just let me just try it. Just humor me, and he threw the crab. Sure enough, didn't eat. That's the only time I've ever done something <laughs> like that. But, but yeah, Kroger and Spot. Kroger and Spot. And if, it, if it slows from him, it's dead. Bluefish. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah. It's yeah. just. But crab, I guess it, gets, it challenges him too much, gets in his posture. <laughs> I don't know, ah, man. They just, it just looks funky, not natural in the super. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're, trying to, you're trying to bring it bring to him. Bring it to him, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be weird, man. Dory says he thinks we should all take turns doing the yak attack ad. I guess that was from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a, a Kobe messing with a crab the other day on the surface. That was pretty Picking cool. Picking at it? Yeah, it was, it was like a, I don't know, 35 incher. And it come up, it'd come up and peck it, go back down. Come back up and it'd smack it again, come back down. Came up a third time and just gave him a jig. We were watching it. And, so we, and then he just <laughs> charged the jig. <laughs> Most aggressive Kobe ever. <laughs> so, just tucking out a crab. Yeah, just mind our business. Like my fucking dog up there. I threw a, one of those ghost crabs on the beach at it the other day. This dog could literally just... He's 90 pounds. Yeah. I mean, he could just swallow this thing whole. Mm -hmm. Nope. Pick, pick. Yep. <laughs> it's so scary. Eventually got both of its claws off. Yeah. And then I just, once he crushed its shell, I just grabbed it and threw it out in the water. Yeah. I've seen striper, like schooly striper, just attack a crab on the surface, like biting his legs off. Pow, 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 pow. Well, like small like One day when I was with Rick, it was uh, like two seasons ago. It. <laughs> was it, wait, was it alive? Yeah, it was it alive. Was just, it was just there. It was alive, just trying to get away. <laughs> pow, 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 pow. <laughs> That's funny that they would eat it and not suck it down. That's what I was. It was no, too big. Like, it was it was it was a big full size crab, and these are like eighteen inches. Uh, they couldn't get all. They're just biting the legs. I off got you. It was one of those super active years ago when you had stripers. When stripers existed. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, stripers are extinct. The dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the <laughs> I was over on the shoals one evening with Rick, and the day before Blake had smoked the drum on uh, Menhaden. So we fuck those crabs. Crabs are expensive in the spring anyway. So fuck it. We, yeah. we bought Menhaden. We get over there, we weren't catching shit. The crabs were drifting by us like crazy. As soon as the sun got real low, like, you know, where it's orange light, you can't really see anything mm -hmm. at all, just a shimmer. And uh, we just started hearing slurping. At this point, Blake and I look at each other and we're like, fuck that, get the nets. We start scooping crabs off the top as they go by the boat. Every crab we caught, we put on a hook and threw out, and we caught a drum on every single one of those crabs, except the one we put on a free line floating on top. Yeah. <laughs> Every, I mean, and we would catch them at will. Like we catch, cast the rod out, catch a drum, catch another crab, catch them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you all just like give me bait, give me bait. Just yep, anything. Just waiting. That's a free drum right there. That goes I tell you, well, that's what I love to do. We had all this money, and they were no, we were catching shit. That's what I, I love to do. I love going out and catching like catching crabs. I've caught drum off of cap crabs that I've netted. And the circle like that. of life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put them on a jig head, not even a rig, just a jig head throwing down. Well, I mean, in the fall, we catch all our bait for drum. Mm hmm. Yeah. Catch, a, catch a spot or croaker, put it down on the hook, down on the Oh, bridge. shit, as a charter captain, how much time do you spend catching bait? Mullet in the fall, a so, lot. So net oh the whole... And you keeping them alive? Anymore. You keeping those alive? I have, I have a huge bait pen, yeah. Circle and all yeah. that shit. Big bait pen. Yeah. So, do you throw a mullet at the cobias in the fall? Or do you just drum. use them drum fishing? Drum, okay. drum fishing. Okay. Yeah. So what about in, like, now? You know, do you have... I'll, uh, I, don't, I don't have any eel. No eel. Any, no, nothing like that. But I do, I just go out there and on the way out, I'll take, you know, a sabiki root with six hooks, tip the blood worms, let the charter catch them. Yeah. Some charters are like, they, they only have to go cobia fish. Like, oh right. man, catch them right. <laughs> And we're like shaking them all up in the pen. We're like, what are these for? Like, you wait. <laughs> you just, you just. <laughs> you get these, you know, those little, or right off the little creek jetty, you know, just mm -hmm. the perfect size. I was catching them. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the flounder you lost size. Yeah, I, <laughs> I lost it inside of there yesterday, probably 22, 23 inches. That, that's a good one. Oh, it was a giant one. <laughs> it was. It was and a real my next big one. I caught a croaker that big. I was like, ah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why he's over here, all these little teeny croaker. Yeah. Like, that, yep. you know, that size. Slurp them down. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, he lost it on his 20 pound leader. And the thing is, you know, we always, I'm always using like 30 and 40, and he's like, ah, 20 pound. So, Speak. have you ever had like an epic day? And like, because I know I asked Jake this today, and he's he's he said several times, like an epic day. You catch a fish after fish after fish, and the people are like, "That's enough. We want to go home." Yeah. Amberjack fishing. Oh dear God! Well, fuck those things. <laughs> Just saying. Damn right. Pay your pay your hundred twenty five or hundred fifty two hundred bucks, whatever it is. Go down there, catch one, and stop people. I mean, it's the best <laughs> thing. It's the best thing for your fucking health. I'm telling you right now, it's the best thing for your health is to catch one and quit. Shit, you, <laughs> run out of, you run out of here and go away. Or I've, I've only done a few times, and it's on special request. And this is South or South Tower? South Tower, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's You're at 10, 12, you're at what? 12 and a half miles till you get to Rudy from. It's far, I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's far. It's far, you gotta pick your day. It's 50, yeah. it's, well, we, we take Rick's 20 foot Jones Brothers out of Rudy and go down there, but. Still, it's 12 miles. Yeah, yeah. Ahead. It's, yeah, it's 12 miles ahead. We have, dude, we had the most epic 4th of July, not this one, but the last one. Oh, but that's not even time. fun, though. It's like. I like hooking Dude, all no. the jig, and I don't really want to fight them after that. Well, I didn't They're want to fight small. that many of them, but we were catching them on top water. Nobody else. Oh, that's nobody cool. else showed up at the yeah. tower all day. We showed up at the tower on the Fourth of July. The inlet was covered in fog. We broke the inlet after we couldn't catch any bait, and as soon as our the nose of the boat came through the jetty at Rudy, it was like fucking Moses split the fucking sea. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just like God damn, <laughs> what? there it is. What? Yeah, <laughs> fuck this, we're out. All the way to the South Tower, we didn't see another boat all day. The only regret we have is knowing now that we could have caught those amberjacks on top all day. We saw the biggest spade fish of our lives as we rolled up to the tower, and we had bait for them, but we could see all those amberjacks near the top and nobody else around, and we were like, throw the plugs! Yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, one cast. It was no, there was no second cast. Everybody yeah. hooked up on the first cast. It was crazy. Thank yeah. you, sir. Amazing creatures, house. I got like That's 52 only time inches that day. Your charters go. We quit. Bluefin. Bluefin too. Yeah. Bluefin. Yeah. Inshore yeah. bluefin. I mean, you know, it's all that, all those powerful fish. Yeah. Right. Not really cobia, because you got people chartered for cobia. Jake said he's had people on half day inshores run across schools at the Cape where they were just casting and casting and casting. The people were just like on reds, like, reds and cobia and cobias. I've just had it on reds up. too. But and the people are just like people give it up. Is, on these them. are too big. Yeah. We want to go. Yeah. Let's do something else. Yeah. yeah. We'll get the, um, right across the red schools, and people will, they don't, they don't say, I want to stop fishing. Like, let's just not catch more reds. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go after something we can eat now, because, you know, they're too strong. Well, that, yeah, yeah that, you, can't, you can't keep them. They want to bring something home, and they're burning their arms. Yeah, the out best thing is, if you, you got, you've got a couple of Kobe in the box already, you run across the school of reds, then you got some. Nah, you, oh, you, man, you on a charter, I'm hooking every red. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's like the best pull of the day for them. You already got the fish in. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You throw the eels at them, or? No, nah, I'll try to pick a Kobe out of a school, but it's impossible. Right. Impossible. No matter what you try. I've had them eat eels. The drum are... So, yeah, yeah, the drum are super yeah. aggressive. The only thing I've ever heard of not eating eels is amberjacks. I've never even tried that. Eels, I don't they think went, they, possible, went, they went in the boat. They, they mothershipped the kayaks down. The first time they ever mothershipped with Rick, with uh, Ken Neal, with Rick and those guys, took the kayaks down to the South Tower, put eels down for amberjacks, and they refused them. Why did they put eels down for amberjack? We wasn't that's just what they had. Oh, they're just like, I got some eels. Yeah, they, Rick, Rick keeps them all summer. And she, you know what I mean? They, yeah. they had them on the boat. I mean, yeah. That's just weird because everything, everything, like, else everything eats a worm, dude. Mm -hmm. That's funny. <laughs> Those things are full of worms. They ought to get another one. Uh, <laughs> full of worms. <laughs> Too strong. <laughs> they're just stupid. And they, every one of them does the exact same thing. You hook it, and it's an, there's just this explosion on the hook. And then it's just like. Doink, 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 zzz. Four bucks. All of, every single one of them. Four times. Hit you four times real hard. See you later. To the bottom. Zzz. Yep. That's a run. Yep. All yeah. they can take. Yeah. <laughs> every one of them does the exact same. I've caught so many of those stupid fucking things. I hate them. I, I go every that. time. Every time somebody offers, it's like, every time Rick's like, you want to go to the South Down? I'm like, yep. I hate those. I'll go, I'll go and get a citation. That's about it. I haven't registered any of mine ever. Was it 55? It's 50. 50? 50. Yeah. 50. I, the one Fork? Yeah. No. Fork. Length, I think. Total, total, total length. Full thing. Virgin yeah. Virginia, all the Virginias are total length except for. Shark. Uh, like sea bass. Black yeah, sea bass center. doesn't have a length. But it's center. Black like sea bass doesn't have a length release, does it? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. No, that doesn't. It's just for, you know, for keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. They measure up from the center to keep. Yeah, they don't have a release citation for those. Yeah, trigger fisher to the tip, and that tip is extra three inches. Yeah, you know? them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, for, oh, for the citation. Yeah, yeah for citation. They don't have any limit. No, but that's why I've done. You ever mess with the spade fish and trigger fish any? Or yeah, I went two days ago, the day before. I, I mean, I know when you're fishing the bridge. You see, when you come yeah, across the bit, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. especially like when you first start and you come, when you go to over top of the big D. Oh, oh yeah, my goodness! Yeah. Today, did you see that water off the high rise today? That yeah, area? it was like super green. So, I, I where I was was clean. Yeah, it was super oh, green, oh, oh. clean, like just like king mackerel green. It was green. ridiculous. We pulled up to like one pylon, and I was like hundreds of spade fish, and then there were like sheep's head. I yeah. could watch my jig like all. I mean, I tell you, I was almost on the bottom. And I was just watching the jig go down. You, wow. you get color on the fly, or like you set, uh, set the hook, come up, and it's like brown, like five feet up. You're like, oh my goodness, just crazy offshore water out there. Yeah, yeah it was wild. real clean today. Yeah, yeah. Right, I don't know. Side. I don't know why it's. Did you go all the way on the other side? Oh, there? we fished the high rise. Okay, right at the high rise. I don't. Yeah, Zach and those guys. I don't know if you guys are fishing closer to the island than we were fishing, but we can't. We, Jake Kiss can't fish. Yeah, yeah he can't yeah. fish up on the bridge. You know yeah. what I mean? Justin Spade yeah. fish too. He was marking the shit out of them. Yeah, they're loaded. He can't fish that bridge for spade fish in that big ass boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The only way he could fish for spade fish is if he we would have gone like to the tower reef and tried to flounder out there. He saw him out there. But yeah, even off those big bumpers would be hard to really get in there and hold it. You have to drift by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and drifting is super hard because charters get hung in the yeah. props. Yeah. <laughs> spade <laughs> fish. <laughs> <one of those. laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Everybody, you know, it's just when you got people that don't fish all the time, it's really hard to do a whole lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a lot of people, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. That's why I like code fish, you know, you just hand the rod. That's right. Get right. Big bite on it. <laughs> hey, you stand up top. You, do you and your mate, or do you have a client with you up top? I have, I have a mate. Okay. Do the I'll, let the client, I'll let the client um, throw, though. If they, I mean, if they request it, have fun. That's fine. Yeah. 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 But a lot of times I explain to them, I say it's all about presentation, you know, the cast. I'm like, go ahead, catch a few. We might come up there if we want. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You cast yeah. them up top? Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pull nice. up. I don't, I, I usually don't cast, like, um, I'll drive, and I'll have my mate on standby. That's yeah. like what I always speak out of my seminar, have a designated caster, because it's right. the worst when both you guys take your eyes off the fish, grab a rod, and you don't know what's going on. So I, have pl I always have planned out beforehand. But it's good, yeah, because you don't want, that, that, that stops a little bit of the chaos of two guys grabbing and trying to shoot at the same time. The, 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 neighbor, the chaos when I almost killed my neighbor out there? <laughs> yeah. Dude, last year. So I fish with this guy all the time. He's not a good fisherman. He's not a good fisherman at all. He's listening right now. No, 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 he's not. He's, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's just not a good fisherman. And he just, he wants to catch a big cobia. And I mean, I, I've caught him up, I've got him up to like 35, 40 pounders. You know what I mean? I just haven't. Every time I get a chance at a bit, he just freaks the fuck out. All right? He won't let me drive his boat. But every time we see a fish, he stops driving the boat. He wait. Right. Say that. Wait. Say that. Right. So he won't he, let me drive the boat. Yeah. So every time I see a fish, he just stops driving the boat and starts casting and shit. Oh, so wait. He you won't don't keep have controls. No, no, no. I mean, no. This is my neighbor, not my buddy Jay. This is the dude I've been fishing with for a couple years. No. Okay. He's got a center console, Boston Whaler. I'm standing on the front, on the bow. Like, that's what it is. Okay. That's he what just I, walks I, I thought. You, I got you. I got <laughs> yeah, you. He just leaves control. <laughs> so anyway, this last year, on the bridge, we saw one in the morning. And it disappeared instantly. So I was like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to practice this. As if that fish is still there. I want you to drive by the piling. I want you to circle back around and give me a shot. Once we see that fish, like, nobody's coming to steal it, dude. We're fine. You know what I mean? Like, just take a circle. Somebody's going to steal your circle. They're not, like, bombarding casts at your fucking shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so I was like, just make a circle. So we practiced this a few times. The site conditions got great, so we moved out into the bay a little bit, you know what I mean? The bridge was getting crowded, and then it got later in the day, we hadn't seen anything. So we moved back into the bridge, and up and down the bridge like three fucking times, didn't see shit. I come down and I see a, a pair of 60 pounders just like three feet down on this piling. And I'm like, dude, there's two 60 pounders right there, let's just, and I fucking turn around, <laughs> and the tide is going in, and we're on the ocean side of the Ocean side yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. And my man, I turn around, and my man is up getting ready to cast. <laughs> now, at this point, I'm two feet from the fucking pilot. <laughs> In the side of the boat. I mean, I'm oh, up, like man. mid, mid draft on the boat. Oh, I fucking lost it. I pushed him off the piling and lost it. I was like, what the 
fuck, and there's two guys just coming in, and I just laid into him right there in front of, like, whoever, it didn't, I didn't give a fuck who they were. At least it was his boat. the fuck are you thinking, man? Are you trying to fucking kill me? <laughs> the fuck are you do? what is, somebody's got to drive this goddamn boat. <laughs> it's got to stay cold. It's got to stay cold. So, is, how many, has he ever caught, like, any cobia? Yeah, every time, every, every time I take him out, we catch one or two. <laughs> so, he just, he just. Still freaks out. Yeah, but we, I crazy. mean, I'd never gave him a shot on the bridge before, ever. It was just late. I mean, and then we, we didn't go out. Normally, I take him buoy hopping. Yeah. And I'll either catch one off a buoy or in between the buoys. You know what I mean? I got you. Most of the time, I take him buoy hopping. <laughs> yeah, pulling off the pilings, that's tough. I mean, in a boat, it's, it's tough. Oh, Connor, you have to have a guy on the wheel, like you're saying. Yeah, boat. somebody has to At, drive this fucking right. boat. All the time. <laughs> right. That's usually me, like... When I see a fish, there's nothing I do but get my positioning right on that fish. That's all. That's my job is to make sure that fish does not spook for me, and I get the right my my guy casting lined up perfect. That's what I was nothing doing with else. Jay. Now, and, and you can't you can't no you can't cut the engine. You can't lower. You you got to keep the RPMs right. Totally. Yeah. And that's what I understand about the engine. You don't want to go there. Tunk. Yeah, you know that right. 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 The, the yeah. tunk goes. Yep. <laughs> so you just want to keep it going. Now, what, so you say you, you got one coming like this way, and you got him. You kind of get beside him, right? Now you're cru cruising with him a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. What about if he turns? If he turns, yeah. Then I turn. You always try to keep the bow at him. Okay, so you you got the loop rack. You, rack you would do that, depending on how bad your whitewash is. That's where a lot of fish. If there's white, a lot of whitewash for some reason, they hit it and they go like this. They're just gone. If it's not, a, if you're moving slow, they'll go right through it. No problem. But huh. if it's, if, I guess it's a rolling wave. Maybe that that yeah. bothers them. Usually they don't change directions. Sometimes in rough water, they'll, you'll see them dart in the wave, but uh, normally if they have a path, they're going that way and they're just cruising. You I'm can not, the one, just because the one I saw did a turnaround. Yeah, Kevin got if they hear you got, or there's something if they if you come up right behind a cobia like this, like let's say he's swimming this way and you come right, right up behind him, that's a lot of people think that's the right way to go. Right. They'll do some weird stuff. I think they feel like a press is coming behind them. Yeah. They start yeah. like doing this and they start sinking. Well, I feel like yeah. they're getting stalked. I mean, yeah. that's, 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 this is something angle. behind it. That's what I told Mike. I was like, I told uh, Jay, I was like, fuck that. You got that tower now. Get a pulpit on the front of that bitch. We don't even need rods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I'll be out in the middle of the fucking day harpooning them motherfuckers. <laughs> you need it for some of the things that don't eat fish. <laughs> some of the fish don't eat. You wish you had one. Yeah. I mean, we had one last year. Stud man, and it was uh, and I cast on it, charged the eel, didn't do a thing, of course. It was, I mean, it was huge. Came right up that, by, beside the boat and just was circling the boat. That's just right, just like that for I don't know, and 10 we, minutes. We, yeah. we, did, we put every single bait in front of that fish, Back in and my charter was just like this, looking at it. Don't, don't even know what it was. They thought it was a dolphin. <laughs> I was like, come on, guys. So like, I took y'all cover fishing. They're like, what is that big thing? A dolphin? I was like, no, that's a, that's a <laughs> big cover. <laughs> We were uh, off the ocean front back back when uh, trolling live baits was working for King Mackerel a few years ago. We we're trolling off Sandbridge, and we got the kite out and three live baits behind the boat, a bag of chum, and we're cruising up. What we, we we it was between one and a one and a half knots or one and a half and two knots. We had bluefish, so I believe it was one and a half and two knots. We mm -hmm. were you would just keep the boat just chugging along, and I'm looking back, and the left flat line, this just. Giant, like 60 pounder just comes up on it and he's just swimming up on it and just like noses at the bait and doesn't eat it. And at that same moment he doesn't eat the bait, Mike's like, look at the motor. And we look down and there's like an 80 pounder just four inches behind the prop. While you're moving. While we're moving. <laughs> just four inches behind the prop. Mesmerized. Care. Mesmerized by the prop. This one stopped what it was doing. It was getting ready to eat that bait. Stopped what it was doing. And just came and chilled with this one. <laughs> they were so close you couldn't present baits to them, and we didn't have like a big. I didn't have a four foot gaff. Just free gaff them. Oh my god! I was. It, if we'd had the right gaff, it would have been. <laughs> they, they were mesmerized. They didn't know shit. Yeah. They followed the engine for right forty five seconds or so, and they just swam down away. That's so random. It's while moving, the they'll weird. do it like you know, not moving, but moving the, the right behind the prop. I mean, just two of them next to each other, an eighty wow, pounder and a sixty yeah. pounder, just. <laughs> just <laughs> A turtle? I don't know, man. You know, hey, what are they thinking? They were doing, man. It was stupid. <laughs> I hate them. It was fun though. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're they're so awkward. Like you That's, never yeah. know what you're gonna see. Dude, them there's all. the uh, yeah. well. Also, the way they fight, they're all different. That 67 pounder I caught off the bridge. Didn't Kevin happen. had the camera in the water next to the boat and just watched this thing swim around the whole fucking time yeah. until we put a gaff in its neck and it shook off the gaff. 
and then it like shook out in the water and bled out. And he never just dove or nothing. never dove just, ever. Yeah, it was just weird. Didn't do shit. Whole surface fight. Yep. Yep. No, no, I mean, no, no. no it wasn't even a fight. Pull. No. Just surface tough. Just, just stayed far enough away from the boat we couldn't gaff it. That's all. Yeah. We had a seventy-six <laughs> pounder. Caught in 15 seconds two years ago. Right. On the bridge. Dude, that, that fish swam right yeah. under the boat. If somebody would have been standing on the bow with the gap. The first time. Yeah. The, the, the very first time that thing swam next to the boat, they could have just stuck it. It was four inches below the surface, yeah. right by the bow like this, and I got the rod yeah. just right on top camera. of it like this. And Rick's like, at this point, Rick's like, are you sure you want to kill it? I'm like, you goddamn right. I got the video. The video's like, you goddamn right I am. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring it up. It's funny. It's funny as shit. It's, we, it's super mess too <laughs> that that one we got that was in like 15 seconds literally uh cast jig 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 hook crank and it came right to the boat like this yeah. came right up on the surface and the guy downstairs was like the guy was still in the tower like we just hooked it like that even depth on a pass downstairs the guy's like you want me to gaff it he's like gaff it and put it right in the boat <laughs> and it went absolutely crazy that like, thing just, like, I was just oh, like oh yeah up. Did it break any reels in the boat? <laughs> no, it, the guy jumped up on the live well and yeah. it was just going crazy. How long did it go like that? Until we smacked it in the head a couple okay. times. Okay, yeah. so you got to hold oh, yeah. it. Otherwise, it would have just kept on going. Yeah, we don't have a bat or anything yeah. on Rick's boat. Mm -hmm. We just put it right no, on ice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they gore it to death with fucking Rick bullets. just keeps you Rick keeps gaffing them I don't know it's stupid yeah I don't know he keeps gaffing them I'll show you see this yeah. video man it's awful we, we, me and Kevin are like no no leave him alone yeah. <laughs> we got him we gaffed him twice he came off the gap in the water and bled out I mean Bl bled the water out. went the water bled went out. from clear to you couldn't see through what did he hit him like right here yeah, hit him oh, right yeah. Through the he came <laughs> underneath underneath of his head and it was a three inch hook on the gaff yeah. so it landed here, here and just instead of Google Google no 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 ripped. here instead of here if he'd got him here he'd have, the fish would have been in the boat because yeah. he'd have got that meat yeah, right there say, yeah. he got him right here Side and it the took plate. the gills Side and the gill, plate. And the gill oh. plate dude and it just tore gill I mean it throws blood all over the boat and us <laughs> everywhere when it shakes off the gas. anything bleeds out in the water in the water it's still fighting and there's no more blood pumping out of it it's, it's still, crazy yeah 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 we don't. I don't try to hit fish. That's anywhere here is a danger zone for me. But Rick was just first. Oh no! Did I gaff him in the head? First he gaff him. Oh yeah! I, I stick him right behind him. My well, buddy Blake does well, this well, though. Well, this well, is well. how Blake likes to hit him. Is right there in the right there behind the head in the belly. I mean, just oh, like, like right, right here. Right, right here. here. Right That's here. That's a good mid spot. Try to hit him. I always hit him right. There if I can, or I'll hit him where he said right here. Yeah. See, I stay away from the. I try to stay. I don't do like tuna. I stay away from the meat. I just go. Plus, they're most of, I don't know, I guess because you got charters and stuff. We fight the fish and get them to the, to the point where they're docile, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not out there Kobe fishing to see how many I can kill instantly, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just kill them all. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you people want to put meat in the box. If I have one shake the hook when I'm trying to get the gaff in it, I'm just going to go fishing some more that day, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, You know, so it's not a rush. I'm not, there's no rush to stick one. And that one we tried to get fast because it was the biggest one I'd ever hooked. Yeah. yeah, but that was yeah. We pulled one more. Well, to actually, the, other, but otherwise, when you landed, it was just it was just because it was done. I mean, it yeah. was like it was up beside the boat. And it wasn't acting like it was going to fight. Would you hook it on a eel? Yeah. So it was just down in its throat anyway, just slowly killing it. No, no, I don't think the hook was. No, 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 no. Yeah. Right in the mouth. Oh yeah. man, he what just was, was dumb. He didn't want to fight. No, it was, and we'll big ones like that, like down here, and it's weird. They're like they just die and they open their mouth and just come into the water. Yeah, well, I've I've noticed with uh, stripers and reds, it depends on where you hook them and how they fight. Yeah, they, they don't fish like in the tongue, tongue and they go crazy. They do like specks. They shake a lot because it's a weird. It, it's it's not like you know fish. They it's not like when they they say with the the dog. You know, fish have like dog like a dog. You know has sensitive mouths uh -huh. because a dog can't eat a whole crab. You know the fish don't feel the hook itself, but they feel the pressure. Yeah. So when they're hooked here, it's just they're leaning against it. When they're hooked in the tongue, it makes them go what the fuck and shake. Because huh. I've always stripers and red, stripers and red will not fight as hard if they're hooked in the tongue. It's interesting. They they just shake a lot. You know they'll fight, but they'll. It's always initial trying to shake that off rather than. So you don't want to hook them in the tongue. No, right? no, no. It's, it's, and always the best fight is from, right, right, right in the front of the mouth, center of the mouth, and they have the best leverage. Huh? Best leverage on you just for a fighting, fighting. Yeah. You know, just for a fish fight. hooked in the corner of the mouth fight good. Yeah. But yeah. in the tongue, it's the weird. Tongue, it's weird. The throat, gut, it's weird. it's weird because then they're you're they're actually pulling from here, so they're they're feeling it from here instead of you know here where they have their full leverage. Every big Kobe is on, just like. They're always down here. Yeah. I let them eat. If it's a big Kobe, we literally just open the bale. We just sit there for like 15 seconds. Let it just go down. Yeah. Jay, that, when I took Jay the other day, the one we got to eat, the, when we saw those five, the one we got to eat, he threw the eel, and the fish dove on the eel, and he's like, 
should I come tight? Should I come tight? And by that point, the fish is swimming back on top again. I was like, man, you gotta, <laughs> I mean, you got to do something, man. Either he's got your eel, or I got to throw this one. <laughs> Two eels. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. That's the best feeling, man. It comes up and you just see your leader hanging out. Right. You ever, you know, you ever notice when they, they, they crush that eel and they come right back to the surface? They start doing that weird, like, twitch with their, you ever seen that? No. Mm-hmm. It's the best feeling ever. You see them, they start doing some. That's with all the big ones, dude. They notice something's wrong for their hook, they start twitching. <laughs> you hook them like four times. <laughs> yeah, you, you, after you stuck them already. No. Oh, so they, they, they smoke the air, they go down, they come right, they come back, right back up. And they kind of like lay on their side and do like a weird twitch with their mouth. There's something open. in their feeling, mouth. They're feeling yeah. the, the line, I guess. I yeah. think they sucked it down and they, they feel the, you know, it's just something's not right here. There's a piece yeah, of metal but, stuck but, in I, but I've, I've, I've had a striper that passed the hook through, and actually the hook was stuck on his ass on the way out. Oh my goodness. A full on like 10, 10 on hook, yeah, with the hook yeah, was but, stuck like on the way out. I just pulled it right up for him. <laughs> he had, he had, <laughs> had digest it through completely. That's what I want yeah. my big carry to do. That'd be awesome. Hook him in that. He want to catch one. The hook coming out of his ass. <laughs> I need to go. Is that deep enough for you? That's what I'm talking about. So even if it pulls out, you should, you're going to rehook. I don't ever somewhere. give him the eels that long. I always hook him in the mouth. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I have hooked him in the throat, but I never. Yeah, yeah. The only ones I've really, really hooked real deep like that are off buoys, blind bites. Right. right. It's because your eels swimming down, I guess, so yeah, long. No you're just, just giving it so much slack. Yeah. It's just, yeah. 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 Especially if you've thrown in a buoy a couple of times and you haven't had a bite. You're really giving it a lot of life yeah. and all of a sudden next thing you know you're tight. 40 pounds. All of a sudden your line shows up over here, starts leaning out over here. Oh, wait a minute. The current's not going that way. <laughs> I like blind shaking them off the buoys, man. Yeah. I've never hit one blind off a buoy. I've had them not bite the buoy, not bite baits while we threw it at the buoy. And then we set up the live baits trolling and the kite came past the buoy and I, it had to be the same fucking fish. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Just blasted the kite bait. <laughs> but blind, blind casting them off, or blind, yeah, blind casting them off of the pilings, pulling them out of the pilings. I think Rick had done that. Rick, one time. I, I was with Rick and Harry one day, and we were going along, and we, we were still sight fishing. But I was standing up top, and and Rick was standing on the bow, and Harry's driving, because it's just a um, cuddy cabin boat. You know what I mean? Uh, have you seen Harry Hindmarsh? Yep. Okay. His uh, whatever the pro line or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. I don't know what it Angler, I think it is. I was standing on the hard top and Rick was standing on the bow and he was just blind casting the pilings, man, having like 50 pounds come out and rip the jig out of his hand and just shake it instantly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, yes. That yep. sucks. He just shook it off. I threw a cast up there, hooked a fish instantly. This was on the front piling. I threw it at the back piling, hooked a fish instantly. And Harry, for some reason, thought of the boat forward, thinking that the line was going to go through the pilings, I guess. <laughs> well, that you was a, it ahead of your path going. All he had to do was make a left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was way. He was. It was way up in front yeah. of us. All he had to do was make a left. He went forward and it was over. Yeah. You ever thrown it two Kobe or three Kobe on the surface on a pylon, and your something eats it under it? No. That's how I always get my big ones every single time. I had one last year, hundred plus pounds. So like it's a small school, and then you cast and it passes the past bait them. just drifts yeah. a little further I, south. I, I, I've you, done that. Probably four times. First time we did it was uh, there was like a thirty pounder and a twenty pounder, and I and it was weird because like I saw this big fish like four sets up and I said, "Yo, there's a stud on that that pole up there." So we went up there, came back. I was like, "Oh, it's just two little fish, you know, lined up right. Right. like a big one." And it's that actually on my Facebook video. I'm recorded with a GoPro. My friend cast eel in there, hits the water, goes down under him. He's like, "Oh, I got something," and he kept feeding it to it. And he set the hook seventy eight pounder <laughs> completely randomly. But then last year. We had, this was the biggest Kobe I've ever hooked in my entire life. Well, I mean, easy 100-pounder. And it was on a charter, which charter did fine, I, I thought. There was like a 60-pounder and a 30-pounder circling pylons. It was a really good fish. And we had 10 auto owners, you know, 80-pound leader. We Perfect setup. Mm-hmm. Pitch eel in there, wouldn't eat. Pitch eel, pitch eel. Just wouldn't eat. And that slack tide. And he's like, I'm just going to let this thing swim down. And it just, you see his right. I was like, oh, my goodness, you got something. So he just kept feeding it. It, Stella, 15 pounds of drag, set the hook on it two, three times. We fought it for 30, 40 minutes. Stayed on the boat it? the entire time. Did you see it? We did not even see it. And it just set us on the boat, head shaking, took us out the other span. I mean, I've... Citation drum. Just a giant drum. Yeah. I've fought, <laughs> you know, 80, have you ever noticed, like, 80 pounders? Any, any, I mean, I've hooked 80s, 70s. They right. all come to the surface within the first five, 10 minutes. They're, they're COVID. They're always on the surface. The big ones will stay down, you know... 80 pounder will stay on the surface 15 minutes, show himself. 
This one never even came up. 100% cobia. I mean, just sat down there, just head shaking. It was wild, man. Mm. Big girl. And just, just broke? Just pulled it on. Pulled it. Just pulled it. Pulled it. Pulled so it. even after you thought you gut hooked it. Oh, he let it eat like 30 <laughs> seconds. I was, when it ate, I saw the cobia left the pylon, and, and it was, it was, I let it eat for so long, it would suck. <laughs> That's the biggest one I've ever lost. And the, the crazy thing about it was, the day before, my friend confirmed, I mean, he lost 120 pounder. Broke two gaffs on it. He gaffed it first, tried to lift it in the boat. Wait, or he gaffed it with one, gaffed it with the other. This is on video too. Tried to pull it in the boat, and they completely bent out, and the other one snapped when the other one bent out. And so he had no gas, had to call another boat in, another boat got on there, gaffed it again, ripped its stomach open, and then it pulled the hook. After an hour oh, and a half, that's oh, on video. Damn, so lost that thing. Yeah, uh, gone. Damn. Day before. That was a stud. That, that was a big fish. Damn. 100, easy 100 pounder. Yeah, the only big ones I've ever had, I know gigantic ones like that. I don't that. know, I wasn't on the yeah. boat, I just, there was a video of it. I mean, it was bad. Dead after getting stuck. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing, the only gigantic ones I've ever seen were, were that the one that was following the boat like that, and the one I, the, you know, that came out underneath from underneath that buoy. That thing was huge. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see the whole thing. Yeah. It was, looked like the head looked like a basketball. It was stupid. That one we saw it. We were one a couple years ago when we were at uh, Grandview. We were yeah. in the early morning. We saw that back of one. It made me nervous. I, mean, I was standing up and my legs started shaking. Yeah, he it, was, it was waking just on the surface. It was just, yeah, it was just, I saw the back, you know, just the little yeah. spikes in the fin and mm. just, just like a sea monster. Do y'all keep bucktails in your. Well, we were cobia fishing that day. But, yeah. Bottom fishing. We no. were actually looking. We had chum. We were, no, we were, we had yeah, chum that day, but yeah, we had yeah, we were, baits ready on top. Yeah. Yeah, he had a bait ready. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. He was, they were following. He hooked a. I mean, yeah, so just this, this year. Because my whole thing was like, you know, I quit targeting them after a while. I, I got really sick of targeting them because of, of, the, of the chum and the bait and anchoring off. I just mm -hmm. kind of got away from anchoring off and bait fishing a lot. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the reds don't really do it that much. Mm -hmm. And side casting. So my side casting skills have developed. I mean, I got to imagine yours, yours is too. You, you can probably see them. <laughs> Like, like I can see him now sitting down. Yeah, you'd you know? probably be a beast, you know, ten feet up. Well, when I went out, right. I went out. <laughs> oh yeah, he would be like the, the best you ever like saw. Two hundred yards, I right. see him. <laughs> when I went out with I with Lee and, and Rick, that day I was like, oh, there's one. And I was just boom, I'm like, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, we were like, the, the one he the, 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 the big sixty-seven pounder I caught. He was like, there's one. And we're just at, at this. We started going down the bridge, and we just got mesmerized by the spade fish. And yeah. Sea <laughs> His main fish and sheep's head were just like, oh man, there's tons on this pile, there's tons on this pile. And Kevin's like, oh, there was one. I'm looking, I was underneath him. <laughs> oh man. But of course, yeah. we turned the boat and. So, yeah, so my, instead of, my whole thing is I didn't want to do the chum anymore. I just wanted the side cast for him. So, you know, after after the red season was done, I was like, okay, I'll go to look for Kobe. I'm here in Kobe off of Grandview and, 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 uh, and Hampton are doing pretty good. So, I'm like, oh, I'm, I want to go out there, but I don't, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to catch bait. And go out and look for him because I can side cast now. You know, this is now years later after we kind of quit Kobe fishing. After I kind of quit Kobe fishing, now I can side cast him. So I just felt confident about it. Well, felt like I, I felt like I could do it, and I felt like it, you know, might be an idea, good idea. Mm -hmm. Caught croaker, got my live whale going on, all that stuff, and paddling around. I got two baits out and, and uh, just you know, just trolling some, and then I see one, and I don't even have to stand up. I see, I know what it is. Yes, yeah. it's, it's moving. It's not a ray. It's it's a fish. They and, got the distinct look. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I'm, I'm just starting to stalk them. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even get panicked. I don't even stand up or nothing. I just gotta get. Oh, yeah, there he is. Get ready. Put a croaker on. Follow him. Follow him. Follow him. He makes a turn, and then he gets perfect. I'm like, I'm facing this way. He's going this way. Make a cast over here, and I pull, 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 and let it drop, and he goes, boom, it just disappear, and I go, I'm like, all right. Set of that thing just it's it was big it was big and lungy. Did you lose it? Yeah, I lost it because he spooled me. I I had probably <laughs> I had you know, forty you. yards of I probably had forty yards of line on that reel and I thought I had a hundred. <laughs> I didn't I Disaster. didn't know how yeah, far was it was. Oh. So as as it's going and I'm I've tightened down I'm tightened down I have my momentum going I know I have a couple seconds of him just going for a while yeah. right? he's, He's pulling me. I'm not, not losing line terribly. I'm, he's pulling me, but I'm still going just, just, on his pulses. He's, I'm, he's pulling drag. Yeah. So I'm reeling out my level lines, just getting my shit clear to settle into this fight. And I'm, pow! What the fuck? And I look down his backing. I was like, I don't remember putting backing on this reel. I thought I had it all the way to the end. 
and that it sucks so yeah, it's just, much. It's, yeah, just a miscalculation, and I, I, what I, what I described it as, I, I shot a, a twenty-two at a bear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a slingshot, I'm trying to slingshot David and Goliath over there. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was a big, it was in that sixty-pound range. I gotta imagine. I gotta imagine. Big Because every time yeah. I've, I've hooked on that rod and reel setup, you know, I've hooked big reds with the fifty inches with it, mm -hmm. and this thing was much bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Six pack. <laughs> when did I get over 50? They're no joke. A yeah. 40 pounder. I've seen a 40 pounder. A guy. I'm was it a shark you couldn't stop? Oh, a couple years was ago. A train. Yeah, we're big ones off. Y'all get big ones over there at the shoals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he. Well, we were off Sandbridge. We were off drum fishing off Sandbridge. Yeah, the year it, before last. It been sharks, sharks, and decent size sharks, right, and all that stuff. And then we're sitting there. Yeah, they were close together, and I, I hook one. Or one takes off, and I pick it up, and I go. Shark, I'm like, whoa, this is real, because it was just like steady, just, and just broke. Took it all. It just did, did, did it, all. it was gonna take it all. Yeah, yeah. I hooked one on the end of Sandbridge Pier one night, man. If you, have you ever fished with Jason Carroll? You know Blake Hayden and Jason Carroll. Those guys fish Sandbridge a the ton. Name of Blake Hayden. They fish Sandbridge a ton. So anyway, me and Jason are down there late one night. It was late drum season, and uh, it was just he and I, man. And we, it was getting close to closing. We put our baits out. And uh, I'm standing at the end of the pier with like, my finger on the line, just feeling it. So I feel a tick. And at this point, I just turn towards the reel. You know what I mean? I know yeah. I'm getting a bite. Mm -hmm. I turn towards the reel. By the time I get to the reel, which is, it's a heaver, so it's seven or eight feet away. You know what I mean? Once we got an angle of the pier and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven or eight feet away, it is screaming. By the time I got the drag cinched all the way down and Jason Carroll was pushing up on the butt of the rod, it hadn't slowed down at all. It didn't, the thing didn't even know it was hooked. Yeah. Yeah, just gone. Yeah, didn't know. Yeah. And it wasn't a dolphin. I felt it bite. Right. It, yeah. I hooked a shark right in the side of the face, and it didn't even know it was hooked. Was you get spooled? Same, yeah. Well, I, I broke it. Oh, I got I, you. I mean, it got to the bottom of the spool, and I just jammed my thumb in there <coughs> and broke it and reeled three quarters of the line back up on the spool. It broke the shock leader probably yeah. 50 feet after that or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it was... It, it, it did, like I said, man, it didn't even change speeds at all. All that drag and someone else pushing up on the rod, and it didn't even change. Yeah, it was sharks just get. It didn't change. Freight freight it, didn't, it, it, it didn't even know it was hooked. Yeah. What, it, was your, what, did, what did it eat? A Some fucking mullet. spot head. Spot. <laughs> <laughs> they eat those little baits, man. Those big sharks, like, like, they just suck it and they're gone. I mean, must have. They must have not got it past his teeth because I got him right here and he took everything I had. Yeah. 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 No, no, I was drum fishing off the pier. I always circle fish. It's the only thing I use circle hooks for. Well, that yeah. and white marlin fishing, but yeah. Yeah, because everything else I use J's for it too. I love to set the hook. Yeah. That's why I like to catch those drum on lures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I, you probably prefer the bucktail bite over eel bite. Always. Always. Yeah. I like the menhaden bite over all of them. When you I mean, feel, no, I mean, you could just, you feel the menhaden swimming and then just oh, feel oh, it. Oh, like that. Yeah. Bam! <laughs> you you just you. feel them suck them in. I'm fishing with a foot long fish and you just feel like it's sucked in. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had one day in the fog last year. We caught a dozen or so off the boo off the buoys with Menhaden. Just rolled out of the inlet through the through the net one time. Off there, it was so foggy. I mean, it was so foggy and cloudy, you couldn't see shit. <laughs> it didn't matter. We got to the first buoy. There was one just like dolphining around it. <laughs> at that point, at that point, we knew it was going to be on. Uh, yeah, with the fights of of the Kobe, have you had them? Go air, airborne and all that? All the time, yeah. yeah. You get, especially little ones with tight drag, they sky. Ones. What about the biggest, what's the biggest one you've seen go sky in? We had a, probably, I think it was like an 80, 80, 81, it almost, almost completely out. It was, I mean, it was they all the service They do that dumb thing, walk. man. It, they do yeah. this dumb thing and then they just fall over. Scariest them. thing you'll ever see when you have it on a jig. When you get a big fish on a jig, it wow. comes up. And it comes, you know, half the fish out of the water just starts doing this, and you just see your jig just going like that. Uh -huh. You just uh -huh. like get your head back down, please. Uh -huh. I mean, every big one jumps eventually. <laughs> Usually they come right up, and they, I mean, it might not be all the way out of the water, but I mean, half their body at least yeah. just thrash. And yeah. It's that's usually near the end of the fight, though. I like how the ones, man, when you first hook them, and the 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 medium sized ones will jump, and like halfway through the jump, it's like they've forgotten all about what they're doing <laughs> all together, and they just fall over <laughs> looking stupid. Yeah. Like they don't really know. They, they don't come out of the water very often, so they don't really know. Like <laughs> I I approached a buoy one time, and one jumped. You ever seen that? What? 
Oh, you did what? Check this out. This yeah, is they approached a buoy and went jump. Approached a buoy? Came up to the buoy and jumped out of the water. But this is the weirdest <laughs> story <laughs> I've ever heard of in my life. And no one's ever going to believe me because it's not on video. But I have an entire charter witness. We were in just seeing big fish. This was, this was, uh, do you remember that super moon we had? The big full moon? Mm, yeah. So the fish were already acting funky. We pulled up, we hooked a big one, of course, lost it. Meals 80 plus, of course. <laughs> Move a little bit further, messing with a 50 pounder, wouldn't eat a thing. And then my mate Alex was like, stud. And he pointed that one. We left that one, went over. And it was cruising surf, just like a normal Kobe would. Just, you know, in front of the surf, cruising. Here's where it gets weird. It turned on its side like this, kicked, no hook in its mouth, nothing. Kicked its tail out of the water and started tail walking. Just like this, for maybe 10 yards, just tail walking. It's kicking water everywhere. It lands on the surf, or lands back on the water, splashes everywhere. And all my people down the surf like, oh, the dolphin? like, that's just a big cobia. Alex cast the eel to it, because it, it hit, just blind cast to where it did this, hit the water, went back under. He cast the eel to a blind and smoked the eel. And he let it, just kept feeding it and hooked it right under the boat. It was a 57 pounder. Mm. Complete. Like maybe a remora climbed up in there. I, I, oh yeah, I've heard the Pretty reason that those marlin, the marlin free jump and stuff, is because the remoras and parasites and stuff move up too far into their gills, shake their gills, and they, they go up there and shake it, they slam their head down, they, you know, they're shaking they it, know, and they hit it, it free. Knock it out. They, yeah, they're shaking it, trying to shake it free, and then knock it out. Yeah, I mean, now huh. that's the method between why these fish free jump like that when they're not chasing bait, when they're it not like tuna's so bobbing on bait. You know what I mean? When marlin free jump, they're they jump straight out of the water and slam themselves down. They're not attacking right, or anything. Yeah. Right, coming up to the buoy and boom! That, that, yeah. that, that was weird. Well, I mean, we you have an experience like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I read. I jumped a red. A, 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 a school of red. Oh, I should show you a video of I do have a video of this. The red just jumped? Free, so I, free I spooked jumps. the school. And so I, I was actually, I just spooked the school. I mean, in shallow water, six, eight feet of water. Mm -hmm. So they're all moving. They're all moving like this. And I'm reeling up and one just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it just jumps. And it, I mean, full We're talking size, big, like. 48 inches. Oh, yeah. Full <laughs> size. I, I have video of this. I, 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 there's a background where I can't show it. Yes, but I, I have it. I have it for private showing. For I got training, you. So I'll let you see it. It's, it's badass. It's never, none of us have ever seen read this full size. I've never. I saw. I, did, I saw the craziest free thing jump. jump this year, and it, this is so hard to believe. I saw Togs free jumping at them. This is no bullshit, man. Rick and I get out there. It's the day I caught that ten. I caught it, it, it. Whatever day I put that ten and a half pounder on Instagram and Facebook, I yeah, caught a ten and a half pounder yeah. that day. So. We're out there, man. And That's how like, you know it's thick, but carry on. <laughs> <laughs> we've, been catching, we've been catching togs a few. We start seeing these boils. The water, it's dead calm, man. And, and the current's not real hard. We start seeing these huge boils on top. Like, what the fuck? So we start throwing the striper lures. Yeah. Because this is that time of year when we're getting them on top water over top of the tube, you know. Yeah. That spring bite that's just can be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. No bites ever. Boils every now and then, and big boils, you know, it's just really weird. All of a sudden, these boils start, and three, one jumps, and two more right behind it. <laughs> like, straight out of the water. Little, little medium size. I mean, this one's probably like, you know, 16, 17 inches. Just the average Good size. size. So I know if there are <laughs> babies coming up. Or <laughs> and, and two little ones behind it, but just like a normal, normal average size talk just jumps out of the water. And <laughs> fucking, it was the weirdest shit ever. I was like, was there any boat pressure out there? Like, was it just you out there? Me and Rick, and there was two guys fishing wow. on the... I'm imagining, the, like, mating stuff. Yeah, yeah, they had to be, yeah because they were, that was what was doing... After yeah. that, we figured that's what has to be doing these big boils, what's making these big boils on top, yeah. is these togs are chasing each other around, whether it's mating or fighting over mates or whatever it is, but they were going nuts, that's man. Wild. I mean, I caught a ten and a half pounder that day, so it didn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got the uh, winner for the weirdest fish jump out of us. It's so that's, that's pretty strange. Good. Yeah. I've seen I've seen flounder come up. I mean, and Rick's, Rick saw it too. It's not something you know. Yeah. This is, Rick saw it. I mean, it was we were just both of us just. Right. There's right. no video ever, and no one's ever going to believe you when you tell right. them. So that's how. Yeah, it and is. it was just it was just that day in the spring that the moon was raining. Like I said, they were just boiling all over the top. You get out over top of those tubes, man. The current's slack, and it's early spring like that, and there's boils, togfish. Mm -hmm. They're biting. That's wild. They're trying to fuck. They're biting something. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Oh, we got 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes or so. 10 more minutes, 15. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, any questions on that? Uh, there weren't many, actually, and the one we answered asked what kind of bait he uses for Kobe, oh, bait yeah, and rigs you use that. for Kobe. Actually, what it, I mean, 
don't want to know what kind of rigs you use, but if you're throwing eels, you use spinning rods in a strong enough to catch them, but not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're using 80, oh, yeah, 10, 10 on hooks. Yeah. yeah, salt is 4,500. Is that's like the all around reel for me. Medium, you know, medium sized reel, uh, 65. I prefer 50 pound power pro, and I use yellow so I can keep track of it. That's right. We use yellow. 50, uh, so. 50 I, I was I use 50 for open water just so I can get the distance I need you know all that all the yeah, 65 is is a, is a lot heavier than 50 yeah it goes a diameter and jumps up a, mm -hmm. a good and, like, and 50 you can you can cast farther you're more accurate um, it's smooth through your guides when you're getting the distance casting I use a, a eight foot rod for or seven seven six eight foot something along those lines for casting jigs and live bait in the open water Good you must be you get a good distance. Oh yeah, two ounce jig, yeah. it flies. That's but good. still, when you know what's in range of it, I, those yeah. threes are just so hard to work when they hit the water. And they're loud. You know, on a, on a calm day, you hit them with a three ounce anywhere <laughs> around them, yeah. they're gone. But um, you know, I, I fish tight drag too. But fifty pounds, you're not gonna ever put, need more than that in water ever. But around the poles and buoys and stuff, right? I'm using 65, 80 pound braid. Do you do you heavier. drag fish away from buoys as soon as you uh, uh, practice? Rick and I have always done is as soon as we hook a fish on a buoy, it's kind of like we do it with ammo jacks on the tower and drag. just put the boat in not hard forward but decent forward and just get them far enough away from the buoy. You are fighting them in open water. Yeah, I do that on the bridge um, all the time. Yeah, yeah, and just you, get them away. And, yeah. and the art, like when you when you see a good one, we'll cast a jig to it. And we'll pop, pop, give us attention, crank, 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 get them off the off the bridge. Then uh, let it fall, start working it off the bridge. And then when you hook them, you're instantly on it. Kind of the same thing with Rick with his blind casting, but this is actually working them out. Yeah. And then letting them. You let them bite, because a lot of times, you know, on a slack tide, they're circling it. Yeah. If you let them yeah. eat that and they're on that direction, you're not stopping them. Yeah. And uh, also, yeah. another weird thing is I keep the boat in gear and in water. Yeah, I try. Uh, as soon as I hook my floor the opposite direction just to bury it while my, because we set the hook like four times on it. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I hit them hard, but. I always, most of the time I'm fishing with people who don't fish that much on boats. Mm -hmm. When I'm fishing with Rick, Rick drives and I fish and he drives the boat as he feels necessary. But when I'm fishing with like a guy I work with fishes and then my neighbor over here, anytime I hook anything, I'm always in forward. Always in forward. Just lot, just moving because the, these people... Wait, like, so if you see one, wait, when he's hooked up downstairs? Once, I, once, he, once, once they're hooked. Oh, so once like, I hook so a you're fish, you're casting while moving? I was like, okay. No, no, no. Once, once I hook a fish, dude... On the, uh, when I'm fishing with anybody that doesn't fish every day almost, yeah, always forward. Keeps that rod bent. Keep it tight. Yep. Uh -huh. and, you know, if you start slacking up, I'll go, I'll go faster. I'll bow yeah. line. <laughs> Man, yeah. Because people get tired. And, oh, yeah. And also keeping them off the trip tabs is great. You know, I yeah. sit at the tower and just look down. You know, the line's coming keep right in that corner so you yeah. can gaff them. It brings them up, you know, perfectly vertical. Because you have a lot of times, you know, those fish... The half, like the big ones, they just sit there vertical, just going yep. like this on the back of the boat. So you just get a little gas, and they'll turn their head, and they'll come right up on the side and gaff them. See, that's the thing about being in the kayak. You don't have that power. So <laughs> that's the, you have to the it's rods. bulldog yeah, straight it's, down. Uh, yeah. You're, uh, it's usually you're afraid of your rods for that shit. You're not going to roll. Nah, I can roll. I, I'm just, I don't got it. I caught, it's man, I hooked it's gonna be seven tricky. or eight tuna from 150 to they caught a 300-pounder on the boat that day. And nothing ever rolled me. I never caught one. They it's were so fucking thick. Every it's time, control. every time you yeah. get settled into a fight, another one cut you off. But it's that it's <laughs> that idea of one like that, and you're using the boat to kind of pull up. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the kayak, you're gonna just eventually he'll tire out. Yeah, just yeah. have to inch him up, and it's gonna suck. <laughs> I kayaked one time in Sandbridge <laughs> at nighttime, kayaking out baits mm -hmm. in a stream kayak. Like an eight footer. Oh my goodness! That was the scariest thing. We were taking Imagine. fifty wads out, just get to those breakers. Oh, so the what? The pier bite was so slow. One year, I finally caught my fish off the pier and decided out. That was the first year we fished the ocean front for, for the co, for the drum. Yeah. I finally caught my fish off the the pier and was like, man, these things, they're catching them in the boats. They got to be just a little further. Mm -hmm. So uh, Blake never kayaked ever. I was like, <laughs> man, I was like, we're gonna catch them. Come on, because Kevin and I caught them the first time we tried. Mm -hmm. We caught them. I was like, we're going to catch him, man. Come on. I took Blake out. He caught two and lost one, and I caught one all within the first 30 minutes of being out there. And he was like, all right, well, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the beach we go. And all we paddled out was like 300 yards past the pier. Just, <laughs> just out of casting range and piers set are like up. Design. It's weird. Like, you don't catch fish on the piers unless you really put your time in. It's yeah. weird, man. I, used to, I, I still fish the piers all the time. But 
it's hard on those peers. Yeah. So much respect for people to stick it out. Because I did it since I was like 12. It's a lifestyle. It's, oh, it's, I did. It's more of a social environment. It is. It really yeah. is. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's they call us the Sandbridge Social Club. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. The Little Island Social Club. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's, it's and all I ever did was drum fish. I was never, I'm never out there in the summer. I hate that shit. I'm not staying on the pier in the fucking heat. Fuck yeah. that. You can have it. So hot. You're not. You can have it. I'm good. <laughs> it's it's good so cap you there. Yeah, man. whatever. You can have it off the pier. It's like 20 times more rewarding. I caught one. I caught my first one I ever caught 20 off times the pier. More. And the dude like bashed it with the net three or four times and it shook the hook. It's 20 times more But mm-hmm. I mean, it was, uh, it was borderline going to be keeper anyway. And I didn't Still. care. I didn't care, dude. It was like the end of the day. My dad had come out there to try and catch a drum because the drum bite was so good. One of the dudes caught a Kobe at first thing in the morning, and since I net it, it gave me, like, almost half of it. Finally, around noon, my dad decided he was over it, and he left. Fucking 20 minutes after he left, my rod goes off, and I catch this little baby Kobe, and I was like, fuck, I wish my dad was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as that the came tight, the thing's up on top, just splashing out there. Just reeled him in with the heaver. What, did you catch him off the bottom? Yeah, bottom here. Yeah, like 1509. Well, on Sandridge? Yeah. In the middle of the summer? No. I was like, drum fishing. It was uh, fucking probably October almost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's the latest you've seen them? What's the water temperatures? What, where's the, where's the, the, the lowest water temperature you've seen them in? I caught them this year in 63. 63? Yeah. That was beginning of May. That's cold. And that's, no, that's here. Okay, that's early. Okay, May. So what about in the fall? What's the lowest? We caught them mid-October last year. It was, I think it was like 68. It was right before the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. We, right. we, just, we, just don't, we just don't say a word when we're catching them. We were catching them, man. We were catching them. I was out there it looking for the so drum schools, and I was yeah. like, and I thought I saw, I was like, I was looking for drum schools, and I was like, I was like, I was like count us. I was like, why is it so dark? And I looked this way, and I said, I'm going to go look. And I went over there, and it was three rats just on the surface. It was 60, man, I think it was 63, 64, and they didn't eat, of course. And then I saw, I saw, Another pair didn't eat, and I finally got a single to eat. Smoked the jig. Like, all these other ones didn't want anything to do with it. Water temperature finally got to, it warmed up a little bit today. It was like 64.6 okay. or so, somewhere around that range. And it just. This is the springtime. Yeah, yeah. Annihilated the jig. <laughs> and it was on. Shane wants to know about his jigs, man. Shane who? Hatcher. What, the bucktail? Yeah, I don't know. He, he wants to know about the jigs you lost. That's all. The days are all around, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> you got to take me to go catch some flounder, Shane. No shit. No shit. He yeah. Him. Yeah, he does. And then yeah. he, he remembers when we were catching I know where he's catching Well, I don't know exactly where he's catching them, but he's not catching them where you're fishing. No, he, I, went on, I went on his boat one time, and he was catching them. I wasn't. Motherfuckers will drive you out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, some wreck that's... Yeah. That or just a fucking submerged something, right. anything, just the middle of a hump. Yeah. That wreck Submer- he took me to last year, Shane. He took me to this, to this wreck. I'm telling you, was this big? <laughs> <laughs> but like, you sit there. What? And, and Somebody's anchored. <laughs> and, anchor. and he marked it, man. And he's like, he's like, drop. You like, drop right here. And you're like, got him. It was, it was <laughs> wild, man. It was, it was amazing. A little wreck. That, that dude, dude I saw things. some guys come in the inlet, and I'm not even going to blow up that fishing spot like that, but mm-hmm. the reports from out there are amazing. Yeah. You know, the, where those, the guys that know what they're doing, the guys that are not fishing the bay, are, are the, the, the bites out there are really good. Right. The fishing out there is really good this year. Last year, it was terrible. Rick and I fish out there all the time. We, we only fish in the bay on dead calm, super sunny days. Yeah. Other than that, we fish elsewhere and it's just wherever you know i don't know whether these guys are the, I, the guys i saw last week i don't know whether they're 30 miles offshore or three miles offshore but the fish they caught it was amazing the yeah. catch they had was astonishing yeah hmm. did you ever do any offshore yeah you actually do the tuna do you go after any of the no he did the tuna off? inshore yeah bluefin the bluefin yeah. on the oh, striper yeah, baits that, that is inshore yeah, <laughs> <it was. laughs> striper out. baits <laughs> yeah but you don't do any offshore like dolphin and that stuff not really i mean because you don't, i don't know how but i just I go with my friends because I try to specialize in just enjoy. Oh, plus that's it costs a lot. I mean, it's a that's lot of gas exactly from here. Yeah, I mean, think about that. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not an expert, but I mean, I kind of know how to do it. I mean, I can go out there and catch them. Yeah. Not as good as I mean. I go when I go. I go with like someone like Craig Irwin or Zach <laughs> right. Bowles. You know, they're just they're yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's how that goes. Well, well, even just you know with the doing the Kobe stuff. What's what I what I always enjoy doing. With something that I'm really good at is just being able to practice that. 
Mm. Like every day you go out, it's not, you know, you know, you've done it so many times, it's nothing like really new, but every day you do it, you get to practice something because it's not exactly right every time. You yep. have to make, you have to do everything the way you do it with that muscle memory. You know, sometimes, you, like you said, you're waiting to cast. When you when you're having that situation, boom, and you do it without thinking, and it, it's that practice of doing it and being able to practice. Like when when drum season comes, it's not so much I'm going to go catch a drum, I'm going to go catch a drum. It's like I get to go practice something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to go out there and practice that fight and that stalking them and, and that whole sighting them and you know getting that, every day you learn. Yeah, every every single day. I, I want to practice dog fishing more, so somebody can <laughs> take me to the first island. <laughs> I got to practice a little bit of spade fishing today. That oh was yeah, kind of you fun. went to That was kind of today. fun. That was alright. Did you catch them? Yeah, yeah. I caught probably about ten of them, probably from you know that eight inch size to fourteen inch size. Um, yeah, that was alright. Eight, eight to ten. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was as soon as I got there, and the current had this weird current today, and the wind sucked today, and it was. Like, it was. Yeah, it was. It, it was. Yeah, you were out there. The weatherman has yeah, not been yeah. right for three days straight. Yeah, no. it's, it's been, been like every single day. He's been, anyway. Yeah, he's been off for three days straight. It's terrible. Yeah. They. Dude, last night when the wind was supposed to be blowing four knots, we went down to the pier. And I know. It was 14. Yeah, I noticed that last night too. It was about right. Yeah. You just add them, like if they say five to ten, you add them 15. Yeah. Right? That's about the general rule for it. But we try, we try to look at three different sites and go, okay, what's well, kind of going to be right? Kinda Fish like weather's it. pretty good. Pretty good, especially pretty 24 good. hours out. 24 yeah. hours out, they can give you a real good, real good. All I care about is cloud cover. I'll fish and I'll go out there. And do you pay attention to water temperatures where you still, do you look at charts and water temperature charts in the morning and fish the exact same like pockets of water you fished the day before? Like the yeah, the summer time is not much. And, and yeah, the summer I don't. Is it just in the spring? Um, you yeah, spring, yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, that, all the fishing, that's what those guys hold the whole. Well, even for us for drum breaks and changes. Even for us for drum, we're we're looking for water temps, and that's and then as soon as it becomes summertime, I don't. Worry about water temps anymore. Then in the fall, that's when I start worrying about water temps yep. and all that stuff. But yeah, summer, it's summer. Yeah, it was amazing. We marked uh, seventy two out there at the high rise, and it was seventy eight at the second today. It's a huge change. Yeah, yeah, that's a big. Change. I was like, clear oh. water. Well, yeah. I told when I saw you at the pier a couple of weeks ago, and I told you when, when they were, I asked you if you've seen any of the fish. We came across the bay, and it was sixty eight degrees. It was drum season. Yeah, sixty eight degrees out of Lynn Haven. There was a pocket through the middle of the bay on the other side of those coal boats from like the other side of the coal boats about three miles to about five miles past that it was 73 degrees and then as soon as you got to the other side of that it was back down to like 68 69 degrees that's when i asked you i was like man you've been in that little pocket and seen any cobias i mean it, <laughs> It's like a five, six degree change right there coming through the yeah. middle, middle, you know, coming right up off Cape Henry, right through the middle of the bay. Yeah. And that had to be that same pocket of water they were catching all the drum and cobia around Cape Henry in right. at that time because it was cold water on both sides of it. Yeah. At that time of year, it was like if you got a north wind, it sucked out there because, you know, that cold water would come in. If you got southeast, you know, pushing that water in, you would yeah. slam everything. So Yeah, we got drum that afternoon. Mm. I like drum fishing. Yeah. We do that a lot in the spring. Yeah. That's my favorite fish. That's my favorite. Their power on there are fun. They're fun if you're targeting Like I said, I love them. <laughs> well, this, they, 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 they just rep, represent the brutes of the bay to me. They, they're the rulers of the bay. You just, I've seen them in, in, you know, seen them act in, in their environment, you know, being able to see them so much. And uh, that's what I love about because they're just brutal. I mean, everything gets out of the way. If you're not, you're dead. <laughs> school, school comes through and you better move. That's why crabs are on top because they're trying to get because you can't be in the bottom. You can't escape them in the bottom. <laughs> you can't escape them. You're just them. dead. You see yeah. it? You're dead. <laughs> I've seen things just scoot. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I never really see them over there. I don't, but I don't look for them at the shoals because when I go over there, it's nighttime. So right. I yeah. 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 You did a yeah. shit ton of drum fishing this spring, I saw. Yeah. 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 Every, yeah. every night it was nice, I was over there. Yeah. People love that, man. I love it. You know, you can't, you can't beat that. Yeah. yeah. Action. You touch the bottom, you got one. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so you ever, you ever heard them draw on your boat? Yep. Yeah, I heard a yeah. light drum. I heard a light drum. drum. Yeah. That's crazy. We had that one time we were doing that, <laughs> and what we did was we switched to all jigs, mm -hmm. and what we did was vertical jigging them off the side of the boat. Yep. And then if we heard a swirl or something, just cast your jig to it. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. Middle of the night. Yep. Yeah, the first the first ones crazy. we ever like basically essentially sight casted. We were paddling in, and it got dark, and there were some boils around us, and we had kind of heard that there may be some drum inside, you know, so we never tried it ever. And, uh, I was like, fuck it, the next boil happens, man, I'm throwing my crab. And I took the weight off, and no, we paddled another couple feet, man. It was just three boils in front of us, so I just threw the crab at it, and as soon as it hit the water, it was like, 
thump. I looked at Kevin, and I was like, I got one. And he's like, no way. <laughs> yep, tight. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that was the, you know, and then from then on, we caught him in the daytime there, in the middle of the day, middle of the night. Yeah, we still got a couple months for that. Until they get in the middle of the bay, and that's what I want to, I want to see him in the middle of the bay. So when you guys get a, kind of give me an idea when that, so maybe I can, you know, Rick can take us out there and get yeah. going on some of that stuff. <laughs> so I want to see some of that stuff. I've never seen it, you never seen it. Out in the middle of the bay. So, yeah. 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 Take the kayaks out there. Yeah, sure. I got you. Yeah, film that. Have you, have, you, have you ever seen my cover photo with all those drums? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was right behind the third. Yeah, man, they used to stack. There was like a, a week there, man. You could go there every single. I remember like, that. Four o'clock in the afternoon, mm-hmm. they'd be there. Mm-hmm. Wow, just gold off in the distance yep. everywhere. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Awesome. Thanks for being on, man. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been real cool, and as a. Uh, it's FineoSportFishing.com, F-I-N-A-O, SportFishing.com, and check out YakAttack.com. Oh, no, YakAttack.us, YakAttack.us for our sponsor, and thank you guys, and we'll see you later.